to summarize, you submit the FAFSA. We recommend doing that again by March 1st, but check with each school you're looking at just to make sure they don't have any different deadlines. You'll receive that student aid report. Submit any documentation requested. About a third of all applications submitted are selected for something called verification. It's kind of like an audit. We need to make sure that everything that you've provided on the FAFSA is correct. Typically, it's a worksheet and some tax information that we'll request. There are sometimes other, other types of information we request. Um, for example, those dependency questions I mentioned earlier as far as if a student is in legal guardianship or has a dependent they're providing more than half of the support for, a lot of schools will ask for documentation of that. Um, just to show that yes, that student really does meet that independent criteria. It, it's, helpful, also, it's often helpful to just keep copies of everything that you use to complete the FAFSA. Just keep it all together so if a student or if a school requests it, you have it handy, ready to go, and you can get it to them right away. Um, once, every, once a school has everything they need to determine the financial aid, they're going to send that award notification. And then after that, if you think you need some additional financial aid, you can research some other financial aid options. Some important reminders, make sure that you submit your FAFSA and any other required materials by the deadline dates. Check with other schools, there may be other materials required. Um, and a new FAFSA must be completed each academic year, so you're going to have to do this every year in order to keep receiving that financial aid. If you do it one year, all you're getting is student loans and not much changes and you really, really, really don't want to do it again, you don't have to. Um, but we recommend doing it at least the first year just to see what you might qualify for.